Good afternoon, and thank you for joining me today. I have with me Julie Edge, the chairperson of the Isle of Man Post Office, who will update you on the Post Office's launch of an excellent set of stamps as well today. I would first like to update you on our latest COVID-19 statistics. The total number of tests undertaken stands at 2,854. The total number of concluded tests stands at 2,824. And the number of people awaiting results is 30, and there are 59 people awaiting tests. The total number of cases uh, testing positive is 308. That means there have been no new cases since yesterday's update. The presumed recovered now stands at 247. The number of COVID-related deaths remains 18, with 13 of those in the community and five in hospital. As you can understand, I'm not able to answer any detailed questions on the testing regime and what the future testing requirements will look like. Any questions surround the figures or the testing need to be answered by the professionals within the health service who are dealing with this on a day-to-day -day basis and are in a far better position to answer your questions. However, on this note, I would like to personally say how proud I am to see an island as an island, we are clapping on Thursday evenings in support of our key health workers. Their total dedication in getting us, the island's residents, through this and supporting the most vulnerable at this time must make us all proud to live on the Isle of Man. A big thank you. On Friday, we saw the first of the closed sectors go back to work. Yes, there was some trepidation voiced via social media when this was announced. However, I want to highlight today how my department will both support and enforce the guidance for social distancing in the construction sector. The Isle of Man government has provided clear guidance on our website. Hopefully you can see the link on the screen. Go to covid19.gov.im and search guidance for construction sites. The guidance clearly sets out how to implement social distancing on site, how to minimise public contact, such as ensuring site gates are always closed and manned by personnel from the site, and every person attempting to enter the site is to be stopped and questioned to determine if site access can be determined. Guidance for the employees needs to be erected on site notice boards along with relevant health and safety and public health information pertaining to COVID-19. This is a must-do, and I would ask that all site managers ensure that this has happened. Construction businesses must also follow the staff welfare provisions that are published on the COVID-19 website. This is for the safety of all employees on the site, and the guidance also describes what to do if an employee f falls ill whilst on site. I would ask all the construction sector to read these guidelines, which are published on the Isle of Man government's COVID website. As some of you will be aware, my department operates the DEFA Work Safe Helpline. The number is 686520 and should now be shown on the screen. The helpline is there for anyone within any business who wants advice or to seek reassurance that their company is correctly practicing social distancing. The helpline will provide guidance to the sector and its employees and if need be, will send out officers from the Health and Safety Inspectorate to investigate any serious complaints. The number again is 686520. I know that you may have concerns that you have to return to work and in some cases feel you have been forced to return to work. If you have any questions or concerns regarding returning to work, the Manx Industrial Relations Service can help. Their number is 672942. And the number should be on the screen. This weekend, we've seen some glorious weather However, please think, do you need to go out? We have come so far to get to this stage, so please let us continue to play our part. As a government, we have said you can leave your house, but please, only if it's essential. I know the amenity sites and bottle banks are beginning to open across the island and people are wanting to travel further and carry out more outside activities. But now is not the time to disregard the social distancing rules. Each of us behaving sensibly will save lives. It still remains very serious. Please remember, you cannot visit other people or have gatherings involving people from outside your household, even if you stay two metres apart. The fine sunny weather has tempted people to go outside more, which is to be expected, but the rules on social distancing remain the same. 
Please don't go visiting other people for barbecues, birthday parties or general visits. The police are aware of an increase in people from one household calling on another. But the message is, this is still not allowed. We are seeing more and more people visiting the island's glens and plantations. Instead of visiting the glen that you usually do, why not explore the glen or plantation closer to home? We don't just have South Barul, Conrenny or Laxey. We have 18 mountain and coastal glens. Try visiting the one closest to you and remember to social distance. I would make one final plea. If you're walking across farmland, please remember that our farmers also work here feeding the nation. Every time you open a gate, climb a stile, walk through a farmyard, the farmer and their families are working there. We need to protect our key food producers at this time. Please, instead, go to our glens, beaches and plantations. Help protect the island's food by protecting our farmers. Over the last few year, days, the Community Support Helpline has received numerous calls asking, what activities can I do? Only non-competitive sports and activities which are solitary or involve household members are allowed. For example, cycling on the road is OK, but not road racing or cycling in groups. Fishing has been raised a number of times. The Council of Ministers considered fishing as part of the whole question regarding sporting activities. At this point, it was not felt that it was the right moment to allow fishing nor open sporting grounds and facilities. I know some have asked about kayaking and abseiling, climbing, etc. I ask you to think what happens if you get into trouble. It can take up to 30 people to get you out of an emergency situation. How do they social distance? Please don't be selfish by putting these people at risk because of your choice of exercise. Finally, on a lighter note, I know the retailers have seen a busy Friday and Saturday as many receive their paychecks. And again, I would like to thank these key workers for supporting local food producers and helping my department in their decision making. My thanks go to Andy, Neil, Ross, Kenny, Jana, Des and Chris, who are a few of our retailers keeping our island fed. I would now like to hand over to Julie Edge, Chair of the Isle of Man Post Office, who is going to tell us about a new set of stamps which capture the spirit of the Manx community in facing the challenges coronavirus has brought us. Over to you, Julie. Thank you, Minister. I'd also like to thank the Chief Minister for the opportunity to speak to you here this afternoon. As Chair of Isle of Man Post Office, I want to begin by saying how very proud we are of the entire Post Office team, whether it's our valued postmen, women, our counter staff, our back office staff. Each and every employee has worked so hard together with sub postmasters to provide services to residents and businesses in our community throughout these unprecedented times. The situation has and continues to be rapidly evolving. And throughout this, the Post Office Board has remained focused on the health and well-being of employees and customers we serve, while continuing to provide the essential lifeline for those unable to leave their homes. While considerable experience in business continuity events has also come to the fore, with comprehensive measures quickly developed and introduced to prevent the risk of contagion, implemented and refined in collaboration with the, with the Communication Workers' Union. Just to give you an indication of some of the measures we have brought in to limit the risk to our customers and colleagues, we have divided up our headquarters into zones to limit employee interaction. We've staggered our start times. We've introduced the ability for a number of employees to work remotely, installed final floor markings to assist with distancing, and we've provided PPE, hand sanitizer, gloves and wipes, and optional masks for our employees. As of three days ago, the number of COVID-related absences is also reduced. <laughs> In simple terms, letter traffic volume is down on the same period last year, and we continue to work closely with the National Federation of Postmasters and individual postmasters to adapt to the changing situation. Moving on to some other news, and as Chair of Isle of Man Post Office, it gives me enormous pride that the countless acts of kindness, unity, care and positivity shown during this pandemic, including our very own frontline staff and all those working as key workers to keep us involved. The community really has excelled. Over the past five weeks or so, the vast majority of the island has shown the very best of Manx. They've been resilient, 
they've been determined, they've been courageous, and there has been a renewed sense of community with the attitude we will get through. The Carry Us Through collection of stamps highlights just that. The message that love, faith, care, compassion, work, community, words and science will carry us through these unprecedented times. They are the eight themes on the respective stamps and we wanted to send a positive message into every home in the Isle of Man and to our friends overseas to say how much we appreciate the people who are working tirelessly for us and to share the sense of strength and fortitude in our community. The key workers and volunteers tiers who go above and beyond are so wide ranging. Our NHS, the island's health and social care system are rightly recognised, but also let's not forget some of the others. Pharmacies, nursery staff, teachers, frontline post men and women, customer services teams, our retail sector, our, our logistics companies, bringing all the, good, all the supplies to the island. We wanted to focus on positivity and the human attributes that really matter. Not wealth or fame, but love, compassion and selflessness, all celebrated in this landmark set of stamps. What we are also saying is we are still living this story. And if it is one of hope and fortitude, care and compassion, share it with your friends and family. Write them a letter or write to the generation that will follow you. History is going to be made up of personal stories and times of great events. And we are all now part of that history. I do want to pay a personal thank you to the team at the post office and certainly to our agency designer, Glazier Designs. The idea stemmed very quickly from a conversation between us and has been worked up. Normally to produce a set of stamps, it takes approximately six weeks, but it shows you the work that the team have put in to bring this forward to represent everything that our island is doing. They're illustrated tributes and hopefully a set which will inspire not just the current crisis, but long into the recovery and hopefully will raise the morale of everyone that receives them. A donation from the sale of stamps will also be made to the Manx Solidarity Fund. The stamps proudly display the three legs of man, its meaning, whichever way you throw, whichever way you throw us, we will stand. That motto summarises the Manx spirit and the determination of island people to fight on through this crisis. I'd like to sincerely thank everybody for carrying us through. The stamp will be on, on all the mail leaving the island and also available online. And if a postcard is purchased, the, the stamp, if a stamp is purchased, apologies, the postcard will be sent through for free. So I would welcome everybody on the island to keep continuing playing their part in this extremely difficult time that we face together and do the right thing, carry us through, and ultimately the restrictions will continue to ease. Thank you, Minister. Thank you for that, Julie. And uh, now we come to questions. We have three journalists with us today. And first up is Leanne Cook from 3FM. Good afternoon, Minister. My first question is actually for Julie Edge, please. Um, so we've had reports, Julie, of quite a few people voicing concerns when receiving posts, whether that be letters or parcels, about coronavirus living on surfaces. People would just like some clarity on what extra precautions postmen and women are doing to ensure hygiene is practised. Julie? Thank, thanks, Leanne. Um, obviously, um, we're in contact with our main, main suppliers and distributors. The personal industry is a large industry. The advice that we've always received, and I think has always been published, is that it's between 12 and 72 hours that the virus can live on, on packaging. Our postal staff have all been, uh, as I said in, in the opening statement, issued with PPE. And the one thing that we have been focusing on is to make sure the people of the island do not approach our postal workers, that they leave them to, to do the job. They've all, you know, they are all doing a sterling job during these times and we have had seen slight increase in some of our parcel business. So they are issued with PPE um, and it's a choice as to whether they wear a mask. Okay, thank you very much. And my second question is for Mr. Boot, please. I, I was going to ask about fishing, but I know that you've mentioned that previously. Um, we've had quite a few queries. People are asking when they'll be allowed to use their private boats. Where do restrictions on that currently stand? At the moment, you can maintain your boat. 
visit your boat, sit on it, have a have a, a gin party with your family members if you want, um, but uh, you aren't allowed to set sail, as it were. Um, we are looking at that um, because it, it, obviously it is a, a, a solitary activity, uh, whether you're in the harbour or uh, out at sea, uh, but I can't make any promises, but it is under review. OK, thank you. And uh, next up, Paul Moulton. More, more fishing for you, Minister. Obviously, people that fish are still kind of concerned because obviously they can self-isolate, they believe. Uh, you say there can't be any uh, deafer fishing, but uh, the Chief Constable put a tweet out last night saying that sea fishing was OK. So, um, obviously, people paid £200 for their licences, which started from the 1st of April for, for deafer licences. Is there any sign of that being changed? I mean, you brought it up. I mean, you know, clearly people want to know what they're going to do. if they get a refund or do they wait for that? Well, we, we have reviewed this uh, at Council of Ministers and uh, we felt, uh, along with a number of sports, it was probably better to wait a little bit longer and uh, see how matters uh, evolve as a result of uh, easing the situation. Um, fishing, uh, reservoir fishing, is a, a fairly solitary activity and uh, I think at the moment it, it is uh, fair when fishermen see uh, people using um, the reservoirs for exercise um, and uh, one-way systems instigated that uh, uh, fishing perhaps should be allowed. So I'm hoping that in the near future uh, there will be a, a, an easing of restrictions on fishing. Um, when it comes to sea fishing, um, I... I, I uh, defer to the Chief Constable on that, but uh, we had a Council of Ministers decided that all fishing should remain uh, a, a no-go area. Um, in connection with the cost of licences, we are very aware uh, that uh, people are not able to fish at the moment, and uh, we're looking at ways of either pro ratering it or extending uh, the licence validity uh, when things start again. So we'll, we'll sort it out one way or another. Thank you. And for Julie Edge, the, the idea that you can get the postman to pick up letters, I, I think it's uh, been very well received for a few people, but has it t been taken up uh, by many and have other jurisdictions also taken from your example of having a postman being able to pick up a letter and post it on the, the person's behalf? Thanks, Paul. Um, yes, obviously it, it was an initiative that we thought, um, you know, a number of people have expressed concern that there are a lot of vulnerable people and they can't get it out. Our postal staff did used to do this for, for some of the, the people that they're aware of. Um, with, with regards to, to people, well, I suppose as chair of Aldman Post Office, I, I would just like to emphasise really that it's a service we've put in to help those vulnerable. And as long as it's a letter on the, on the doorstep with a stamp on the postal workers will collect it. Um, with regards to other jurisdictions, Paul, I, I'm not aware of that, so hopefully that's another first for the island. And can I just add, will, will you continue this service after this is over, or is it just for the duration? It, it, it has just been implemented for the duration. Obviously, you know, we have to discuss this with our workforce, but um, obviously the business is transforming and adapting all the time, so um, any, any new initiatives are always looked looked in, into fully, and you know if the right decisions will be made. Okay, thank you, Julie. Um, next up, uh, Sean Cooper from uh, Manx Radio. As to my minister, um, I wanted to touch on your comments on the Health and Safety Inspectorate and the work they're going to be doing with the construction sites. How many inspections have taken place? Is it something they're going to be proactively going to sites and checking that social distancing is being enforced? And what happens if someone is found to be in breach of those rules? What is the punishment? Well, thank you. It's a good question. It's one that's been raised with me on several occasions. First of all, the health and safety team uh, has been, until recently, fairly well deployed or redeployed in other areas. We brought that team back together and we have a number of officers available and we are issuing uh, on the government website uh, thorough guidance on how construction sites should operate. And there is a, a phone number for people to call if they feel there are concerns. But uh, on larger sites, uh, etc., where uh, there are risk factors, people can ask for advice uh, if they feel that the guidance on the website is not good enough um, or they don't get the right advice, and our health and safety officers are available for that. Uh, in terms of... Uh, uh, 
penalties, etc. Um, the first uh, step is always to give people proper advice and try to get them operating correctly and safely. If they can't do that, then they have the power to close the site down and uh, they will not hesitate to do that if uh, matters aren't uh, operated correctly. I hope that helps. Thank you, yes. And um, I want to touch on wildfires as well, if I could. That's something we've seen a few this week popping up. I, I spoke to one of your officers during the week about this and we went over all the fire safety aspects and the following day there was another big fire. Is there a point where you have to step in and say, controlled burns, they're getting out of control, everywhere's too dry, we can't allow this, it's taking too much from the emergency services? Well, we have issued guidance on bonfires, and uh, our recommendation is that you don't have bonfires at the moment. Um, the fires, the wildfires we've had, I don't think have been caused by people lighting bonfires uh, or farmers. Uh, they seem to be uh, random, and uh, uh, sadly, um, there was one behind... Uh, on the mountain behind my house that burnt about four acres and my officers were up there uh, overnight with the fire brigade trying to contain the situation. Um, I, I'm not sure what's causing these fires and uh, the, the fire brigade can probably offer better advice in that respect. Um, but uh, I, I would caution anyone um, not to have uh, any form of fire outside of their house curtilage and certainly not in any of our glens or on our mountain areas and in fact uh, that we've issued guidance and uh, told people not to do that so uh, please do the right thing because uh, it, it takes resource from elsewhere uh, which uh, is valuable and may be needed somewhere else. And just to pick up a little there, if this was to continue to be a problem, you touch on glens and, and mountain areas, would you be prepared to introduce closures if necessary? Well, if it gets to be a real problem, and it is getting very dry, um, as we all know, um, we would have to consider what measures were necessary. I hope it doesn't come to that because that would be a restriction that we wouldn't want to impose on people at this particular time when there are limited activities that they can undertake. But uh, yes, it's always a possibility. Thank you. Um, another question, or um, Paul, you were indicating, did you want to ask another question? Uh, no, I, I think we're, we're, we're there today, but um, obviously, do you think um, these weekend press conferences are still, you know, in, in getting interest? So do you think you're going to keep going uh, seven days a week with these? Um, I think at the moment uh, the decision is that we will keep uh, rolling them on, um, but they will reach a point, obviously, uh, like we now issue the statistics on a, a, a daily basis rather than twice a day, when they will hopefully not be necessary, Paul. Um, I mean, we are making progress, uh, fingers crossed, uh, that this continues to be the case, and that's not just happened uh, by fluke. It's happened because we've all played our part in social distancing and uh, making sure that we, we follow the rules. And as long as we keep doing that, I think things will improve, and uh, at some stage there will not be a need for a daily briefing. And I should say many thousands of people are actually still watching and listening to this, so there's obviously a demand there. Yes, there is indeed, and uh, we, we, we are well aware of this, and uh, it, it also enables us to interact uh, with you, the journalists, so that uh, we, we get some questions that uh, perhaps the public feel that they can't ask us directly. You, you, you ask sometimes the awkward questions, so uh, thank you for that, and there is a need. <laughs> well, most of us do actually come from the public. I think we all get that. I think we'll be used to conduit by most members of the public to try and get questions asked. Yeah, no, that, that's excellent. That's what we're about here. Um, Sean? Oh, you're muted. Sorry. Oh, there we go. Um, could I just ask a quick, quick, quick question to Ms Edge, please? Certainly, go ahead. Um, the funds from these stamps, um, are they going to be going into a, a charitable fund or is this just about raising morale? Um, it, it's both, actually, um, Sean. Thank you for your question. It's There is going to be a donation um, and some of the profit from the stamps going to the Mount Solidarity Fund that was set up at the start of the, the, you know, the crisis that we're in. Um, but it, it is to try and lift some spirits and hopefully... Um, get the message from the Isle of Man. You know, these are the first stamps to be issued, I believe, with regards to the COVID, and it's hopefully we'll be able to get the Isle of Man around the world. Thank you. 
Thank you, everyone. I think if that's all, uh, I will move on to the shout-outs. And uh, at yesterday's uh, briefing, Lawrence Skelly spoke about the importance of the hospitality sector. We have had a couple of nominations for the island's club and bar DJs who have been doing live stream DJ sets, making sure everyone who is staying at home can enjoy the weekend feel uh, from the comfort of their own homes. One nomination singled out is Alex Harris of Gig Man for keeping live music events going throughout the lockdown and bringing new live acts to the island's audiences as well as supporting local musicians. Uh, secondly, uh, we have a nomination for Brenda Moore, who has been delivering fruit and veg boxes all over the island. Well done, Brenda. And finally, I would like to personally give a shout out to all those across the public service and in business who are working so hard to ensure we all have as much normality as possible. Thank you for what you and your teams are doing. And thank you, everyone. That uh, brings today's briefing to an end. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday.